Podcast Marks with Chip Nellinger. Chip is with Blue Reef Agri Marketing out of Morton, Illinois. And this edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Dawson Tire and Wheel, your premier ag tire and wheel provider in North America, helping people grow. Tractor Zoom delivering insights and dry shod boots to social work boot of the Moving Iron Podcast. Chip, how you doing today, bud? Doing well. Doing well, Casey. We're uh, maybe on uh, tap to get some snow here, so it's finally looking uh, a little a little wintry in our forecast here. It's been a great fall. Yeah, and uh, weather has been really good. More sunshine than normal this fall. All the field work done. So, uh, from a farming perspective, it's been a really good uh, run here since uh, about uh, September. Yeah, it's the same way out here, man. We've had this incredible. That's why harvest got done so quick. It's just been a a very a very nice, quiet, uneventful fall. Warmer than normal for sure, but. Um, uh, you know we're supposed to get some snow too. I think this weekend is what it sounds like, but it's uh, it's stacking up nice here, and, and hopefully we can get that transition to happen for us as well. But it's been uh, we need some moisture too. So subsurface uh, soil moisture is going to be a big a big key for us as we move into uh, planting season here coming up because we are very dry um, out here. But how's how's the uh, moisture out your way? Uh, it is the same, very dry, and uh, probably not quite as critical as you. If you look at that drought map, right? Um, it's it's very dry, especially the further west you go out your way, uh, and, and then south. There's a little little finger of that uh, that yellow on the drought map that pushes into kind of the center part of Illinois. So uh, it's the same. We're we're very dry. Normally, I'm I'm just loath to talk about drought conditions in in winter. Right. Uh, in, in North America, but, um, you know, unfortunately, we we really need to kind of have that in the discussion in the back of our minds because we're going into, you know, that started in September, you know, August, basically, uh, last half of July for a lot of people. Yeah. Just, you know, out this way, just from about the third week in July on, uh, all the month of August, you know, literally no rain for some people. Yeah, um, caught a little bit of rain there in September, but it's it is very dry, and that's something that we're going to come into spring likely, um, you know, with a lot of uh, you know moisture deficit. So it doesn't mean we can't raise big crops, um, but it's definitely uh, raises the bar and makes it a little more challenging because you got to get those rains, you know, timely and. Um, you know enough of them uh, when you don't have a big soil, uh, you know, moisture profile, mm-hmm. and uh, so that's definitely something to watch here. No, no doubt about it. It's a La Nina year. How long that's going to last? It's definitely affecting South America right now, and and a big part of what's going on in uh, you know our grain markets currently is their ongoing uh, drought, and they have picked up some rain here recently, but they're still you know way below average uh, on. Uh, you know, moisture and uh, the two-week forecast still kind of hinting that uh, it's on the dry side down there, and there's certainly some pockets that have missed the rain, and we're starting to finally see, after a little bit of a correction here, the bean market stabilizing and and bouncing a little bit. You know, we got down into the low uh, 1140 area. There's some technical retracement targets down there that we got close to, and now we're starting to bounce back north of 1150. So, this thing's getting a lot more volatile, and we've talked about that, you know, in the last couple of weeks on this podcast. Is something to to uh, probably get get your mind wrapped around that you're going to have some much bigger swings than what we're normally used to, and we're starting to see that now. Yeah, that's that was the thing I was going to bring up with you here is that you take a look, you know, talk about feeding the bull, and you got to feed it every day. Since the um, the weather forecast came out last week that there's a possibility of some of some rain, even though experts are saying even if they've got, got the rain that they're predicting they're supposed to get it still was in lack of a better term, little too little too late in a lot of a lot of instances. So as you take a look what's happened with the corn market here over the last oh five, six days, it's been a it's been a you know, like he's talking about that volatility where you'll see you might go down 
three, four, five cents in one day, and the next day you could pop up two or three cents, and then you might fall off a couple cents and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And and uh, like you said, that volatility is creeping in there, which does give guys some chance to make some moves. But the uh, the uh, attitudes were a lot better when it was on a upward trajectory than it was on this volatile trajectory. Yeah, that's for sure. And and I think it goes uh, to to what you said exactly. You got to feed the bull every day, <clears throat> and in a weather market. When there's any amount of rain on the radar in growing areas, it's it's just hard to get that bullish enthusiasm. So, you, you know, you, you saw a deeper break, uh, almost 60 cents in the bean market, whereas corn was, um, you know, barely over 20 cents. Corn, in my opinion, has held up a lot better than, than beans. Um, you know, it didn't break as hard. And, and when we were breaking, we, we saw those days, like you mentioned, where we'd be down four or five cents early or in the overnight, and then you find some buying and, you know, cl- close up near the highs of the day. We've done that three or four times in the last week. That's a good sign. And so I, I think corn maybe for a lot of reasons um, have, you know, may, may kind of turn out to be the leader here, whereas beans were the leader prior on, on the rally to this point. The demand structure uh, in corn uh, and the fact that I, I think a lot of people, myself included, think that on this January crop report in a month, they're going to continue to cut corn yields. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that maybe they need to raise the ethanol number, 25 to 50 million bushels, because of the pace of ethanol. The, the export pace has been tremendous. Uh, you know, a lot of animals on feed. That feed number is pretty solid. Yeah. And so uh, this carryout shrinking in corn, and it feels to me like, Corn just is on much better footing right now than beans, and on this next leg higher, um, I would not be shocked if, if corn kind of doesn't take over as, as maybe the, the leader in here. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of rumors that China's snooping around for additional corn, you know, maybe up to another 5 million tons of corn. Uh, that's great demand to have, but, you know, essentially that's just going to go right to the bottom line and and get whacked, um, you know, on the carry out because that's extra demand that we hadn't uh, planned on. So, you know, feels to me like corn's uh, got very good support underneath of us, willing buyers on these breaks that we're seeing. And uh, I, I, I like where corn's at here going into the end of the year and, and really after the first of the year. And, and all bets are off on South America. You know, if they're right. going to trend to this continually below average precip um through the month of january then this thing uh, really could start growing some some stronger legs and 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 really turn into what's a you know a problem to you know a, a big big problem in, in south america if that dry weather continues in january yeah and on that on that idea of, of brazil right now i mean if you take a look at this uh, report that came out on pro farmer this morning unprecedented forward sales for brazilian beans uh says they have so far, uh, for the 21 crop, they have got 65% sold of their soybean crop and 15% of the 22 crop. So farmers are definitely taking advantage of that of those higher prices they're seeing down there right now. So that could, that could also have a big, a big draw on what we see for uh, actual, actual stocks is if they have this much of it already sold so far this year. Yeah, uh, and that's largely because of, of currency yeah. uh, swings for them. The currency, uh, you know, essentially they've had... I think going on three years now of record high prices that the Brazilian farmers are receiving, largely because of currency uh, issues for them. So they have a lot sold. So that kind of caps some of the, the hedge pressure above the market. And I'd argue that farmers here in the United States are, are, are probably at least two-thirds priced in beans, if not higher. Some people would argue they're maybe up closer to 75 80% price. And, and that last little batch that they do have, I think they're going to, you know, they have uh, visions of, you know, $15, $16 beans in their head uh, to try to help average up some of the earlier sales. And, and they may just be right if the dry weather continues in, in January. But point being, there's, there's not that massive uh, farmer, uh, you know, hedge pressure above this market. So if you do get back into more of a bullish mode where you're, quote unquote, feeding the bull every day with dry weather and pictures from Brazil of withering crops and the drought uh, and you get the funds back on the buy side, there's not going to be as much selling pressure. And, you know, we stopped right at $12 uh, 
Um, I think we poked uh, uh, just above it briefly in the January contract. And, and so the next batch now, the next rally, if we get up through $12, it could really accelerate uh, the rally if we get back above $12. That's kind of the, the, the glass ceiling right now that everybody's going to be watching. And now that we've had a nice correction, almost 60 cent break off those highs, um, the next rally attempt, if we get through $12, it could really accelerate and uh, shoot us right to, to 13 or higher very quickly. Yep. Yeah, so a lot of crazy stuff hanging out there, kind of in limbo, and we're kind of hitting that that mid December um, stride here, where what's happened in Brazil is going to make a make a bigger difference as we start looking um, in the short term here. So good stuff as usual, Chip. Um, if folks want to reach out to you, get some more information about what's going on with uh, Blue Reef and how they can get help on that plan they're working on, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, best way is just give us a call at the office. It's uh, 309-550-7213, and uh, we'd love to chat with you on uh, what your marketing plan is, how you're executing that, and um, you know maybe some advice on a couple tweaks that uh, might just make a difference and uh, add some profitability to your bottom line. Right on. Well, I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Make sure you check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's where you're going to find the latest posts of the Moving Iron Podcast when they come out. Also, got a blog coming out about uh, what's going on in the used equipment marketplace. I'll have that out here hopefully this weekend. Um, kind of a, a brief snapshot of what kind of a historical comparison compared to what happened in 2009 and 10 to what we're seeing happening now in, in the marketplace. So there's some. There's some good uh, good drawbacks there that I've that I've taken in comparisons that I've taken a look at. So look for that to uh, happen there on the website movingironllc.com. Also, you can find all that same information there. Find the blogs, you can find the podcasts. Also, all the information on the Moving Iron Summit that had to be postponed to this fall. I do have uh, new dates uh, postponed. I'll get those out to everybody and up on the website. That'll be September 15th through the 18th. Uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Renaissance Hotel. Same information um, that was there before. So, uh, with that, I am Casey Seymour with Chip Nellinger. Let's go move some iron, folks. Out. Moving iron in the 21st century.